Good morning. I welcome you as we are gathered to give praise to the God who always has and who always will be caring for us, his children. If you are first-time worshipers, visitors, we extend warm welcomes. We're glad you are here. And uh, we ask a favor. There's visitor registration cards that you can fill out, and uh, you can place those in the offering plate when it comes by. We appreciate that. You may also, if you wish, sign the uh, visitor registration pads, the black pads there, and uh, you may uh, do so there. Uh, I, I, I have to do uh, turnabout as fair play uh, because uh, when I was last year on my vacation Sunday visiting a neighboring church, uh, the pastor introduced me uh, as a visiting pastor. And so uh, Jerry is a visiting pastor of us today, Jerry McCorse, and uh, I'll uh, thank him for uh, worshiping with us. And you can talk to him all you want afterwards then, too. So thank you, Jerry. Uh, this is 8.30, this is our traditional service. You find the green bulletin there, we'll follow that as printed. Inside are all your announcements, a few highlights there. With Veterans Day coming up, we have two special offerings for you. Uh, one is to serve our active military personnel. There's the Faith Comes By Hearing little Bible stick that you can contribute to if you would like to have these uh, given to uh, active military uh, service personnel. Uh, also, there is the collection in the fellowship hall uh, for the special counseling services for veterans and their families. So those are two special offerings that you may contribute to. Uh, other news, let's see. Uh, condolences to the family of Artis Papinga Sacri. Um, Artis, I think, moved out of Lenox back in the 1960s, but uh, has many roots here. Uh, she passed away on October 30th. So uh, please remember her family in your prayers. In hospital news, uh, Dick Kempel is still in the Heart Hospital, but will be discharged tomorrow and be going for rehab services through Good Samaritan Village. Uh, that's the Marion Road one, and uh, rehab services are on like the north side. If you enter the south side, you gotta walk a whole block to get to the rehab. So if you wanna visit him, try to start at the north. Um, Stella Sorley and Arnie can fill you in on uh, uh, little Stella. Uh, Premature, two pounds, but doing well. Uh, Gladys Johnson was in a hospital, but is discharged as well as Lena Abbas was in. And Jim Reynolds, Colleen's dad, has also been discharged. So uh, continued prayers of recuperation for them. Happy birthday today. Uh, Tammy Denning, Chad Munts, Tegan Musser, Kevin Shuffleman, all celebrating their birthdays. Uh, my final story is a news uh, interest item in which they were um, having an archaeological dig over in the area of the Holy Land, and the archaeologist uh, came across a particular um, mummy, and uh, he said, after some studying, he said, I, I can tell you this mummy died of a heart attack. And the other archaeologist said, uh, I don't understand how you could determine the cause of death. And he said, well, I just read this uh, note that's in his hand, and there it said, I bet 10,000 shekels on the giant Goliath. With that, please stand and greet one another. Welcome one another in the name of our Lord. And as you are uh, being seated, a special news flash. Uh, Heidi had her baby this morning, a little baby girl, Kinsley. So congratulations there. As we uh, turn to page 21 in the front part of your Reclaim hymnals, we don't have our projectionist today, so you are actually going to have to turn to page 21. That's another uh, advertisement. Uh, if you'd like to be trained in projection, uh, greatly needed there too but page 21. We're 
finally ready to begin our worship. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sin to God our Father, imploring him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Most merciful God, you have given your only Son to die for us. Have mercy on us and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. By your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, so that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son Jesus Christ to die for us, and for his sake, he forgives us all our sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, by his authority, I declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the singing of our opening hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Glory to God on high and on earth, peace, good will to all. We praise your name on high.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Grant us so firmly to believe in your Son, Jesus, that our faith may never be found wanting. This we pray through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear God's word from Holy Scripture. The first lesson is from the 17th chapter of 1 Kings, found on page 299 of the Pew Bible and page 401 in the NIV Children's Bible. In response to King Ahab condoning idol worship in Israel, God sends a drought. The prophet Elijah must flee to the Phoenician city of Zarephath, beginning on, with verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterward make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said, and she and her and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. The word of the Lord. Please turn to page 525 in the Pew Bible. Let us read responsively Psalm 146. Page 525. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my Put not your trust in princes. In the Son of Man, whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plan Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. Who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them. Who Who executes justice for the oppressed. Who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. The Lord will reign forever. The second lesson is from the ninth chapter of Hebrews, found on page 1006 in your Pew Bible and page 1346 in the NIV Children's Bible. Christ will come and take us to himself with joy, beginning with verse 24. For Christ has entered not into holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, 
now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters the holy places every year with blood not his own. For then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the singing of the Alleluia verse found on page 25 of the Reclaim Hymnal. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. And in his teaching, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and like greetings in the marketplaces and have the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feast who devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. And he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums, and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I invite the children to come forward for a children's sermon. Good morning. Have you guys uh, seen anything like these things laying around on the ground? Have you seen anything like this on the ground? Do you know what it is? It's a leaf. Yes, because this is a time of year when the leaves are starting to fall. Uh, can you identify any of these leaves? You've got a puppet, too. You're going to have to introduce him to uh, uh, Rocky here. So, uh, Rocky, can you identify any of these leaves? Of course I can identify leaves. I live in trees. I know every leaf of every tree. Okay, so what's this? That's a cottonwood. Oh. Um, this one? Uh, that's an amber maple. Ooh. Uh, that's a silver maple. Oh, okay. Uh, you know leaves very well. Like I said, I live in trees, and so I know every leaf of every tree. What's your favorite? Mm -hmm. Oh, I would say black walnut. Why that? Well, it makes walnuts for me to eat. 
and you humans don't like those, so I get to eat all of them and store them up for the winter. Well, uh, well, would you like to tell us why it is that the leaves turn from, what color are they in the summer? Anybody know what color the leaves are in the summertime when they're growing? This one wasn't always red. It was green. It was green. Oh, yeah. See, they're all green when they're growing, but then they start changing colors, and they sort of die and fall off. Of course. Well, why do they die and fall off? Ah, ah. Otherwise, they would be there on the trees when the snow comes. And if there's a bunch of leaves on the trees and snow falls on the leaf and every leaf holds a bunch of snow, what's going to happen to the poor tree branch? It's going to get full of snow and more snow and more snow, and then it's going to go crack and break. And I don't want my trees destroyed. I want trees growing so I can live in my trees. And so during the winter when the snow is coming, guess what the trees have to do? They've got to drop and fall. That's why you call autumn fall, you humans. Oh, okay. So. There's something about leaves and changing and falling and dying so that then they can come back and the tree can live. This is the way your God and my God made it so that I have trees all the time to live in and we have trees to enjoy. God made it so that the leaves will fall in the fall. Oh. Have you guys in Sunday school yet started making your little hand leaves for our tree down in the hall? You're going to find out. Go down to the fellowship hall after church, and you'll notice there's a tree on the wall. It's not, it's not a real tree. Yes, it's made out of paper. But you guys are going to make leaves out of your hands, and you get to put them on there. And part of this is understanding how God has put our beautiful world together. Oh, you're going to show them their prize? They get a prize? Yes, they get a prize. They came up for children's sermon. Oh, okay. So you guys get a prize today. What it is, it's your own leaf that you get to decorate. And it's one of those leaves where if you scratch on it, it will release the colors on it, behind it. So you each get a leaf, and you even get a little stylus to decorate your leaf with. So pick out a leaf you want and then I have the stylus here and you guys get to decorate these uh, quietly during the rest of the worship service, okay? You need one of these to scratch on your uh, leaf with and it'll reveal the colors. Okay, he doesn't want uh, just one you need. It's all, you, you only got one leaf, so one stylus will work, okay? Did you get a leaf yet? Did you get your stylus? Okay. Here you go. Oh, we need one of these colored leaves. You want to take that one? Okay, good. That's for you. Everybody, oh, you need two of those. Once you start doing it, he'll want to do it too, so. Thanks for coming up and learning about leaves this time of year.
Grace, mercy, peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord, from our Savior, Jesus the Christ. From 1 Kings, chapter 17, verse 1. Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. This is addressed to Ahab, and if you know anything of the story as it unfolds, Ahab and his queen Jezebel deserved to suffer a drought. Ahab was king of Israel, God's nation. Jezebel, his queen, comes in, and she brings along the gods of her country, Baal. Um, so Ahab doesn't prevent it. Now, of course, our modern minds are sitting here wondering, well, you know, Ahab must have been a, a modern pluralist. Well, my dear, you have your God. Uh, I have my God, uh, but I can't say to you which God is better uh, or that the people of Israel uh, should not have to make a choice. So why don't we just bring in Baal prophets? We'll have uh, the prophets of Yahweh, and then we can just let them decide. You know, paper, plastic, Baal, Yahweh, it's all just fine. But if you read the story of 1 Kings, God, Almighty God, is not a pluralist. He, this is why he sends the prophet Elijah to tell Ahab, you have done this horrible deed, bringing in these false prophets. Therefore, there is not going to be any rain. There's not even going to be dew. There's going to be no moisture whatsoever until, and this is going to be for many years, until I come and speak to you again that God is sending it. This is not a couple of months drought. This is going to be a couple of years drought. Now, this God has said, and of course, this is, of course, what happens. From the moment God's word is pronounced by Elijah, there is the drought. No rain, no dew. Now, understand, without moisture, without rain, what starts happening? Nothing grows. Crops fail. Pretty soon you don't even have anything to feed your camel. I mean, camels can go for a while without water, but pretty soon there's no water for them. Everything is starting to die, and people are starting to starve. In Elijah's day, there were no international relief agencies. It was, if you didn't have anything growing, you're going to be dying. So, unfortunately, Elijah himself is living in Israel. He is sent forth and is sent out. This is where the uh, ravens feed him in the, by the brook Cherith. But that even dries up. So now, uh, God is not saying to Elijah, well, Elijah, I'm going to send a rain cloud over you. And there's, No, he's saying, you are having to be in the same pickle. But he sends him to the widow at Zarephath, which is in Sidon. This is foreign territory. This is a foreign lady. Uh, this is not one who is worshiping Yahweh. He sits there, and, but he tells to, the, uh, to Elijah, he says, I am sending you to this widow whom I have commanded to supply you with food. Interesting, note this. Before Elijah shows up, she has been commanded by God to give him food. How this happens, we're not told. But Elijah shows up. He finds this woman gathering sticks. He asks her, you know, uh, can you get me some water? Okay, she'll go to the well and get what's left of the water. Uh, but, but how about some food? He says, she goes, no, I'm gathering these sticks to make a little fire, and I'm going to take the last of the flour, the meal. I'm going to take the last of the oil. I'm going to make a cake, bake it, and then my son and I are going to uh, curl up and die. It is that drastic. Elijah says, do not fear. Go and do as I have said, but first make a little cake for me, bring it to me, for thus says the Lord God. The jar of flour, 
will not be spent. The jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said. Interesting. Why would she do this? Let me tell you a story about Janet. This past week, um, I spent most of it in Columbus, Ohio. I was there uh, representing our uh, dean, Randy Eisenbeis, at a dean's meeting for the NALC, and then I stayed for a, a mission festival. Um, I'll be filling council and others in on this. Um, but while there, in one of these gatherings, uh, I'm talking to a lady named Janet. And after I heard her story, I'm going, Janet, can I share this? She goes, oh, of course. Janet uh, shared that she had recently become widowed. Uh, she was a pastor's wife, and she said when her husband passed away, the grief and the pain, she goes, was just overwhelming. And she said, I sat in my house, in my chair, for two months. I just sat there. I was in such a deep depression. And I couldn't do anything. And she said one day she's sitting there and she has this image of her coming out of her body, standing and turning to her and saying, okay, it's time to get up. It's time to start doing something. You used to be very active. You used to go and visit people in the hospital. Now the Lord is ready for you to get up and get going again. And then she said, it's like it came back in, and she sat there going, I don't know if I'm losing my mind or not. That same week, the pastor stops by, and he goes, Janet, it's been long enough. It's time for you to get up and be doing something. Notice, she's already been spoken to once. Now, a man of God, or a woman of God, I didn't get the gender of the pastor, shows up and says, it's time for you to do something. And he says, I would like for you to be doing hospital visits for me. And she goes, okay, this is too much of a coincidence. I guess I better do this. So she says, yes. Well, the first visit she has is a member in a large congregation. I think it was somewhere in Ohio. Uh, and she goes, well, who do I have to visit and where? And he told her to hospital. And she goes, oh. This is the same hospital her husband had just died in two months earlier. But she uh, gets in the car and she goes, I don't know how the car got there, but the car gets to the hospital. I get out and I'm going and I'm asking for his room number. And, oh no, third floor? This is the floor my husband died on. So now she's going to the third floor. And she's looking for the numbers, and she goes, and she goes, oh, no. But, no, here's the ICU where he died, and she gets to turn left and go into a room, and she does a visit with the person in the hospital. Um, all of this, of course, as I'm listening to it, I've already been working on my sermon. I'm listening to her tell this. I'm going, this is eerily similar to the widow of Zarephath, whom... When Elijah is sent to her, God has said, I have commanded her to give you food. So when Elijah shows up and says, uh, I need you to make uh, a cake for me, she does it. Because God has spoken. A widow ready to give up. Both stories were the same. In 1 Kings 17, God proves true to his word. She makes this cake for Elijah, and 
children know this. Hopefully, we're learning this in our uh, Sunday school and in our home devotionals. They know that when she goes back to that uh, jar of meal, well, there's more there. And the oil. And it lasts, and it lasts, and it lasts. She, by her eyes, knew there's only one more meal here. But every time she keeps going back to it, there's enough for another meal. God is true to his word. It will not run out until the rains come. Well, there's the story of the widow of Zarephath, and they lived happily ever after. No. No, the, the story continues. Um, this is a biblical story. This is not a pop religion story. See, in a pop religion story, we'd have, oh, this great tale, and then they would live happily ever after. Because in pop religion, we understand very well how religion goes. Religion is, you do good, you get good. Uh, karma is what the culture promotes today. Uh, if you pay it forward, well, it all comes back to you. Well, here's the widow of Zarephath. She gives out the meal, the oil to Elijah. Uh, she gets back all the meal and the food, and she lives happily ever after. But this is a Bible story, which is teaching us not popular religion, but is teaching us the way of God that he acts. The story continues. Sometime later, the son of the woman grew ill. Well, he's going to live. He'll recover, right? God takes care of his own, right? She did right. She gets good and back. Uh, but her son grew worse and worse and finally stopped breathing. Where's the justice? This isn't fair. She has done what was required. She has been obedient. She is supposed to, therefore, reap all the goodness of the world. Whereas there's no justice here. There's no equality. There's no goodness coming back. Oh, have you ever been here before? Where you've sat there in the situation going, well, oh, this isn't fair. This is not just. What are you doing, God? Verse 18, the widow of Zarephath says to Elijah, What do you have against me, man of God, that did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? Did you come to remind me of my sin? When you are in tragedy and loss, your friends come to console you. Your friends try to say, well, this is so unfair. But in the back of your mind, there's a thought that pops up. In the back of your mind, there's a thought, and it says, they don't know me. They don't know that, yes, this is fair. Yes, I'm deserving of this. Because I remember, I remember that incident, that, that action by mine where I should have been punished. And I never was. Now I'm just getting my just desserts. Is this a reminder of my sin? She is asking Elijah. How long could I reasonably expect everything to go well when I just never show back to God a full and complete holy life? When I keep continuing in my sin repeatedly as he keeps forgiving me, how long can I expect that to continue? If it is a truly a tit-for-tat world in which you just get back what you give, there are times in tragedy when in our mind we start thinking, well, I suppose I deserve this. Did God kill the widow's son out of some divine uh, evening of the scales? 
Did Elijah come and explain to her, well, yes, I think this is the way it's balancing out. I'm reminding you of your sin. This is why your son's killed. This is the question she has. Note Elijah's answer, 1 Kings 17. Does Elijah jump into a spirited theological defense of God and his holiness and his goodness? Let me tell you exactly about the nature of God. No. Uh, does Elijah go into, well, God is good, and then running from there? And then he loves all, and it's all. No. Was Elijah's response, well, who knows? This could be what God's up to. Uh, he know, he's a rather capricious God after all. No. Was Elijah's response, well, God just needed another little angel in heaven. No. Thank goodness, no. What was Elijah's response? Elijah is a man of God. He is a spokesperson for God. He is the prophet of God. He is the ambassador of God. Elijah is not God's defense lawyer. Elijah is not some um, apologetic press secretary who's putting out good press about God uh, to explain God's actions in the kindest way. Elijah has no word from God to speak yet. So Elijah says, give me your son. He takes the widow's son. He goes to his room, and now he makes an appeal to God with a question there. Have you brought tragedy by causing her son to die? No. Even the great Elijah doesn't know the mind of God. He can't explain God's ways. But he could, in faith, appeal to God, O oh Lord my God, let this boy's life return to him. Understand, life happens. The mystery in the events and the tragedies of life just unfold. And in and through it all, God is God. The Lord heard Elijah's cry, and the boy's life returned to him. The boy's life returned to him. God can and work, will work weal and woe, but hear this. God is stronger than death. God is stronger than even death itself. Back to Janet's story, the lady I met in Columbus. The pastor has said where to go, and she goes, I can't. Uh, I can't go here. Uh, the car goes anyway. And she's able to go and give this hope of the resurrection to a person who is suffering illness. The widow Zarephath, after receiving her son, who was dead, then says, Now I know that you are a man of God, and, and the word of the Lord in your mouth is true. The word of the Lord that is in your mouth is true because she saw her son alive. Before that moment, she could only hear and believe and trust that if I give you this food, it will not run out because you said so. But now she sees life has returned to her son. Isn't it going to be a great day when finally we see, when finally we're able to know the resurrection of the dead? When we see that what God has promised out of the mouth of Elijah and Matthew and Mark and all the apostles is actually fulfilled. Until then, though, what do we live in? Faith, trust, 
in a word that comes to us, spoken to us, in, yes, the midst of drought. There's so many times in our life that we are in drought. We live under Ahab's and Jezebel's. We live amidst persecution and false gods are always being brought into our lives. We live until death strikes. And there's nothing we can do about that. And we hope for answers, but there is no now I know in the midst of death. All we see is the death. Now I understand? No, we don't understand. What do we have? What do we have? The word of the Lord that endures forever. God has spoken in Jesus Christ. God has not left us alone to live by whatever meager resources we can scrape together but he has given us the living water, the bread of life that will never run out until we see, until we know, but until then, we hear, we trust, we walk in faith that what God says, God does. And this is our life. Amen. Speaking of how we live, I want you to turn to page 27 in the front part of your Reclaim hymnals because I think it's good for us to confess again what it is we believe because the Holy Spirit has brought us to faith by what we have heard. It's a Nicene Creed and invite you to stand as together we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us... You may be seated. At this time, we um, enter a special day in our congregation here in which we will uh, officially welcome a new member. We received her quite a while back, but we haven't had our new member welcome Sunday until now. And so uh, this is what uh, Ashley's been dreading, but uh, Ashley and uh, Jeremiah and Josiah Corey, why don't you all come up and we'll officially welcome you at this time. We're so late in this that everybody already knows who you are, but uh, make the introduction anyway. And well, uh, this is Corey Montz, but he doesn't matter. Uh, This is Ashley Montz. 
Uh, Ashley, we're officially welcoming, born in Detroit Lakes, um, then moved to Sioux Falls, um, is currently a loan documentation specialist at Wells Fargo Home Mortgage. Uh, her hobbies include wine tasting, pinning on Pinterest, uh, baking, and finding projects for Corey to do. That's a good hobby. Um, transferring from uh, Christ the King in Sioux Falls, and Jeremiah also gets transferred in this process. You're eight years old, okay, third grade at Lenox Elementary. Uh, favorite subject in school is Jim. Uh, some of his favorite interests, uh, pizza and video games. And uh, playing across the street with Cameron and, uh, or, oh no, with uh, Chase and, uh, um, yeah. But uh, anyway, today is your official welcome. Hi. Official welcome, and uh, we will do so with our round of applause as we now have done. Thank you, guys. And our worship continues with our offering. We will be singing hymn 42 during our collection. Let us turn to our God with our petitions of need to him that we trust that he will give us that which we need. 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for the hope of eternal life that is proclaimed in your holy word, that is proclaimed through your Son, Jesus Christ. Teach us to always hear our Lord when he speaks to us through his word, that we might learn to live in humility and trust and belief. Father God, as you led Elijah to the widow of Zarephath, so lead your church with its word of forgiveness, with its word of Jesus Christ to those who are in need. For it is only by your word that we truly live. And so we pray that you will continue to send forth your people with your word. God of power and might, you alone are a true ruler of this world. All authority comes from you. So we ask that you will bless the leaders of the nations that they may know truth and lead their people according to it. We pray for our own nation, for our president, members of Congress, Supreme Court justices, all governors, state legislators, mayors, councils. Guide and direct them to know and do your will. Gracious Father, hear the cry of all who look to you for healing and wholeness in life. We pray for Dick Kempel as he transfers from the hospital, for Stella, for Joy, for Hildegard, for Alexa, as well as others that we name in our hearts to you. We ask, Lord, that always your word will sustain us throughout life. We pray for Logan Ann, who will be baptized later this day that your word might be true and that the promise of your presence will always be known to her throughout her life. We pray for those who are hurting, those who are suffering. We pray for the family of Artis Sackley and we ask that you continue to let them know of the resurrection to eternal life that we might live in this hope now and forever. It is into your hands, O oh Lord, we command all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 53.